Namaste. Welcome to yoga. So this class has actually been recommended from one of my viewers and they've asked for a hip opening restorative session focused on some relaxation and some breathing, ideally to be done at the end of your day prior to bed. If you have any suggestions or comments, please let me know in either the comments here or find me on Facebook, Yoga with Kim, and send me a message. We're gonna begin. So we're gonna start on a tabletop position. I'm assuming that you, this is the end of your day and you're already a bit warm. If you're coming in completely cold from sitting all day, take a few moments to walk around, do a few chair poses, get a little bit warm, because we're gonna head right into some hip opener, opening poses, a few stretches, and then into the restorative breath. So here, in a tabletop position, hands and knees, we're just gonna shift slightly over to your right side and bring your left knee out. So we're just coming into fire hydrant. Like we're gonna externally rotate that hip. We're gonna come back to tabletop and then go to the other side. So shift over to your left side and bring your right knee out. Then we're gonna come back to tabletop. We're gonna bring right arm, left leg off the mat for spinal balance. We're gonna bring right elbow, left knee in the center, pull your belly button in, tuck your chin under. We're gonna come back to spinal balance and then back to tabletop. So left arm, right leg. So looking forward, then we're gonna bring left elbow, right knee. So pull the belly in, round and flex your spine. Pause for a moment for that crunch and then come back to spinal balance and return back. So we're gonna bring right arm, left leg off the mat. We're gonna bend that left knee and bring the left leg over. Back to spinal balance. Right elbow, left knee. Back to spinal balance. Now we're gonna bend your left knee, kick your left foot up, and come back to tabletop. So left arm, right leg, spinal balance. We're gonna bend your right foot, bring your right leg over. Come back to center. Left elbow, right knee, here's your tabletop. Here's your prime to your crunch. Back to spinal balance. Now bend your right knee, bring your right foot up, and come back to tabletop. So we're gonna keep your hands here on the mat. We're gonna shift slightly over to your right side and bring your left knee out. We're gonna bring your left knee back to the mat. Then kick your left foot out. Bend your left knee and kick it up. We're gonna bring your left knee forward. So you don't have to touch, but bring it forward and kick it back once more. Bend your knee, kick your foot up. Then bring your left knee out. So you're gonna bring the left knee forward, kick it back out, and back to tabletop. So right leg, hands are gonna stay here, kick your right foot back. Bend your right knee, kick it up. Bring your right knee forward towards that right elbow. You don't have to touch. Kick your right foot back. Bend your knee. You're going to bring your right knee back towards your elbow. Forward towards your elbow. Kick it back. Bend your knee. Lift it up. Sunbird. And come back to tabletop. So we're going to tuck your belly button and round and flex your spine. Back to tabletop. Once more. Back into cat pose. Back into tabletop. So you're going to bring your left leg off the mat. Bend that left knee, kick the foot up. Then we're going to bring your left knee forward. So you're going to just, you don't have to touch your elbow. We're going to kick it back. Kick it back up. Bring your left knee towards your elbow. Kick it back. Left knee up. And then bring it back down to tabletop. So once more. We're gonna kick your right foot back. Flex your foot, lift your right foot up. Right knee's gonna to come towards your right elbow. Kick it back. Flex your foot, so bend your knee, lift your foot up. Then bring your right knee towards that right elbow. We're gonna kick it back. Then bend your knee, lift your right foot up for sunbird. And come back down. So back to tabletop. We're gonna lift right arm, left leg off the mat for spinal balance. Now you're gonna bend your left knee, bring your left foot out. You're gonna take your right hand, gaze, look at your right hand, your, your eyes are gonna follow your right hand, take your right hand, reach around and try to tap that left big toe. And then we're gonna slowly release, come back to spinal balance, right elbow, left knee with a touch, and come back down. So now we're gonna take right arm, left leg, 
right, left arm, right leg, pardon me. We're gonna take your right foot over, eyes follow your left hand, reach around and tag. And then we're gonna come back. And then left elbow, right knee, pull your belly button in, round flex your spine. And then back to spinal balance. And we're gonna come back down. So here, we're gonna walk your hands forward. We're gonna tuck your toes under, come back to down facing dog. We're gonna step the left foot back and bring your left knee towards your left wrist. Left leg comes across the mat. Walk your right leg back. So we're gonna come into pigeon pose, which is a great hip stretch. We're gonna walk your hands behind your left foot, left knee, and try to be nice and tall, and then drop your pelvis. So we should start to feel the stretch along that right glute, left glute, pardon me. And then coming down to elbows and forearms, but trying to keep that right hip kind of roll forward. So you're staying relatively square. Again, you're gonna feel the stretch with that left butt cheek. Abs pulled in, kind of wiggle if you want, roll that pelvis a bit from right to left to feel that aha moment. And just holding for about five more, four. Now, if this is your side that needs a extra love, you're gonna stay here. Three more, two, and one. We're gonna come up off that right knee and come back to down facing dog. We're gonna step the right foot back and bring your right knee towards that right wrist. Right leg comes across the mat. Walk your left leg straight back. Walk your hands behind your left, right foot, right knee. That what that does is help set your pelvis. Then we're gonna come down to left elbow forward followed by your right. Again, you're gonna feel the stretch through that right glute, right butt cheek. Great stretch for sciatica. Kind of wiggle from right to left if you need to. Just settle into that stretch. Challenging it, yes. A reminder, when we stand, we want to try to stand equally on both feet, right and left. Weight equally, right and left. We tend to kind of like to stand more on one side. Same as when we sit. I know we are all taught that we should cross our feet across our knees. Don't do that. And if you're, and if you like to sit with a wall in your back pocket, don't do that either. I'm going to try to keep relatively level and square. So we're going to come back up, tuck those toes under, come back to down facing dog. We're gonna come down to our knees and we're gonna roll ourselves over into our backs. Now, if you have a yoga strap, um, for years I've used my kid Palmer, who's my oldest son Palmer's Taekwondo belt, use something like that, a towel, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna stretch out your hips using a strap of some kind. So if you're laying on our back, we're gonna bring your knees into your chest and we're gonna press your feet up towards the ceiling. So I like to do staff pose at the end of the day, especially if I'm spending a lot of time sitting. It's a great restorative pose. You can do it alongside a wall if you like, but trying to have the balls of your feet come over your hips with your head and spine resting on the mat or the floor. Again, trying to do this at least once a day. Ideally, if you have to at the end of your day, if you stand a lot throughout the day, maybe a bit in your lunch if you can. So we're gonna bend your knees we're gonna let your left leg come down to the mat. We're gonna take your strap and wrap it around the bottom of the foot, even if you don't think you need it. Take your strap, your towel, your Taekwondo belt, your karate belt, and wrap it around. Now, both ends of your strap are gonna go into your right hand. Your left hand's gonna come over onto your thigh, which is anatomically above your knee. Here, it looks, here, it looks like it's below your knee. And just trying to straighten that leg and really feel that stretch. Now you're gonna take your left hand out to your neighbor, palm is facing up, and take that right foot out towards the right side. Now pressing your foot into the strap. So your right leg's not just hanging out, it's engaging. You don't have to bring the foot all the way down, but the more you bend that right knee, the less stretch you're gonna have. And the left arm is simply gonna counterbalance. If you can, try to keep that left shoulder blade trying to at least anchoring towards whether it is actually anchoring onto this, the mat. And then we're going to slowly come up. We're going to let that foot escape. We're going to bring that knee into your chest. We're going to bring both knees in. And then let your right leg come down. Just like we did on the right side, the strap towel belt is going to go along, along through the bottom of that left foot. Take both ends of the strap into your left hand, and the right hand is gonna go anatomically above the knee onto your thigh. Not into your knee joint. This is just trying to really challenge that left leg to be straight, to really let the stretch happen. Try to keep your head and your spine on the mat, belly fold in. 
Now we're gonna take your right hand out to the side. It's gonna counterbalance because your left leg, guidance of your left hand holding the strap, is gonna go to your left side. But we wanna press that bottom of the foot into your strap at all times. So you're engaging and using those muscles. You don't have to go very far, but you're gonna feel the stretch along the insertion of your hamstrings, those inner thigh, that near thigh, keep your core engaged. Remember to breathe and smile, it's not that bad. And then we're gonna slowly come up. We're gonna let that foot escape from that belt, bring both knees in. And then we're gonna take and grab inside of your feet. So left hand's got left foot, right hand's got right foot. Bring your heels together if you can, knees are bent, and then trying to press that low back into your mat. Now let your feet fall away from midline. So press your feet into your hands. Here's a chance to stretch your inner thighs, maybe stretch your chest. Again, always breathing and always trying to smile, even when you are not having fun. So just stretching those inner thighs, holding here for five. Happy baby, because we've all seen babies do this for four. Three, two, and one. We're gonna bring those feet back together. Bring those knees back into your chest and then you're ready, we're just gonna rock and roll from side to side. Easy. So here, we're gonna place your feet flat on the mat. Knees are bent. We're gonna come into bridge pose, but it's gonna be a supported bridge pose, an easy bridge pose. If you have a yoga block, I'm gonna have you grab it. You don't have to go by these, so if you've got, you can take a large um, like towel that you use, for a bath towel, and roll it up, and you can, you can put um, elastic bands, something firm, but not hard, so I wouldn't use like a piece of wood. And all we're gonna do is that we're just gonna lift that tailbone off the mat. So you're gonna pelvic tilt and lift that sit bones, aka the butt crowd off the mat. And we're gonna slide that block underneath. But we're going to come and just press that sacrum into your mat block. Now the block has three heights. So you can play with how tall you want to be. Chin into your chest. You're not going to look at the screen wherever I am. Close your eyes and listen to my words. So again, you can choose how high you want to go. But that's not the goal. The goal is just to kind of sink into it. You're going to feel that middle back and that lower back be lifted off the mat and that's okay. Just gives that back a nice stretch. Chin into your chest. Again, I'm gonna ask that you don't look to the right or to the left, so don't look at the screen. Closing your eyes and just listen to my words. Just breathing in and breathing out. Sinking a lot, little bit deeper into that block, into that towel, whatever you're using. Allowing for the exhalation of breath out to pull the abdominals in. Trying to relax your mind, connect the mind to the body. And then here, we're slowly just gonna press your feet into your mat and just lift your sit bones up slightly and slide the block, slide your towel away and come back down. Now we're gonna come into Shavasana, corpse pose, body relaxation. If your back is tight and laying completely flat on your back is challenging for you, I encourage you to throw a pillow underneath your knees or even to lay here with your knees bent. Another option always is to roll into one side into pose of the unborn child. As we come into Shavasana, I want you to close your eyes and let your shoulders roll back. Let your feet roll out. It's a natural alignment for your pelvis. If Wherever you are practicing yoga is a little bit cold, I encourage you to grab a blanket and throw over yourself because we want to stay warm during this. Though our natural body will start to drop it down in temperature a bit because we're, we are cooling down. But I don't want you to be distracted by becoming chilled. So with our eyes closed, hands resting to your sides, listening to my words so eyes can stay closed. You don't, don't need to look at your screen. And we're simply going to breathe in and breathe out. Allow the stillness to happen. So we've let go of the wiggles. I want you to be very present. 
How do you feel at this moment? How is the breath? Is the breath guarded? Is it shallow? Is it incomplete? Connecting the mind to the body. And the single most challenging part of Shavasana is relaxing the space between your ears. And that's your mind. So really just want you focusing on the breath. The breath in and the breath out. If you need, count in your head your breath. So allowing maybe four counts in to inhale, followed by four counts to exhale. Maybe you'd rather do five. Maybe you'd rather do six. But find that pattern of your breath. Being aware, be mindful of that breath. Allowing the breath to deepen, to be complete, to be rhythmic. Then when you are ready, we're going to slowly open our eyes, still trying to remain still, but take a moment to adjust to now the space that surrounds you, whether it's still bright or it's dark in your space that you're choosing to practice yoga. And then here, kindly to your spine, we're gonna transition up to a seated position. I encourage us to roll over to one side if you're not already in, in pose of the unborn child. So here, we're gonna just stack the hips and your shoulders, and then we're gonna come up to a seated position. So that seated position, sit bones are both equal, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. You're sitting nice and tall, abs engaged. Hands come together and namaste. Thank you for practicing yoga with me today. Just a reminder, don't forget to subscribe to Everyday Life Yoga with Kim. Hit the notifications and don't forget to like this video. Feel free to send me comments, emails, find me on Facebook Yoga with Kim to give me recommendations. This is your class. Have a fabulous day, a fabulous evening.